Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another video. If you're not sure who I am, first time checking us out, my name's Ethan Preston. Welcome back to Preston Outdoors. As you can tell here, we are at the gas station. As you can tell by the title, it is uh, Bassmaster Northern Opens time. We're on our way to Virginia. A little bit different uh, this year compared to the last couple years. Look what's behind me. We got the Skeeter in tow. If you guys aren't aware, don't follow me on social media. You know that I am fishing, or if you're not aware, I'm fishing the Bassmaster Northern Opens on the pro side this year, the boater side, so I'm pulling my boat. Uh, big step for me over the last couple years being a co-angler. And yeah, it's gonna be interesting. We are going to Richmond, Virginia. This is kind of be the travel vlog and practice vlog all kind of wrapped in together. It's gonna to take me two days to get there, two full days of travel. Just outside of Dayton, Ohio, so a little bit farther past Champaign, Illinois, found a truck stop. Uh, what I underestimated in that area, the Midwest, around Ohio and stuff like that, Indianapolis, is the amount of semis that are, one, on the road, and two, in the truck stop. So if you're from that area or been through that area, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was really my first experience uh, witnessing this. Drove to multiple Love's gas stations, completely full, no parking left. Uh, finally found a rest area where I could pull in. It wasn't really a parking spot for a truck and boat, but we made it work, tarped the boat, spent the night in the truck for about four or five hours, got up and finished. And uh, once again, probably a little bit overexcited, did not film when I got into camp. Did a little bit of filming here when we got there and got some, some rods rigged. And uh, of course, first night trying to stay in the tent, it rains. And let me tell you, foreshadowing, that's not the last time it rains on this trip. So I uh, messed up and didn't get filmed at the campsite here. We'll do it in the morning for an overview, but we'll give you a, a glimpse inside this tent. It's been a while since I stayed in the tent, so it took me forever to get this thing set up. Got a few rods rigged, as you can hear here um, above me and outside the tent. It's raining. It's supposed to rain all night and rain in a couple days, so that'll make staying in here interesting. But give you a little run down here. I brought a mini fridge cooler full of stuff some of that stuff will go in here we got a table uh, my wife was absolutely awesome and helped me with all this extra food air fryer instead of a grill this is all kind of a mess we got all the chargers for the GoPro light computer and clothes camera bag and a mattress so it's pretty ratchet but uh, we're gonna make it work. So we're gonna get some sleep here, get all these GoPros and stuff plugged in, SD cards swapped out and all that good stuff. And tomorrow we're gonna start practicing. I don't know where we're gonna start or what the plan is, but we're gonna get after it. Oh man. We're here. The James. We're gonna get the uh, graphs on the boat here. A little bit later start than maybe I like. It's a little bit more tired than I thought I was gonna be, but. Um, I don't know, I almost freaking hit a deer on the way in here, so that's pretty cool to see. They're tiny! If you guys are from Virginia, you got tiny deer. Um, yeah, we're gonna get stuff rigged up here and head out there and we'll talk to you on the water and kind of break down a little bit of a game plan. Granted, there is not much of a game plan here until I can really hopefully get dialed in on some stuff, so here we go. By the time I had fished a few areas with those steeper banks on that high slack tide, what I ended up finding is that there's uh, the water was falling, per se, because the tide was going out. So I found some smaller areas just like this where the water was pulling out and there's actually current on trees and stumps and stuff like that. 
again, falling back on my research and talking to some people that have fish to James River fish set up on this current. This is their dinner bell during the day. Twice a day they set up to feed when a rising or falling tide. So they sit the sit in front of the cover or the upcurrent side of the cover if they're really aggressive and you know behind the cover and that slack slack water per se behind in the in the current so what i try to do is take a i made some jigs specifically for the james river here a little black and blue style or black and sapphire blue uh, to imitate some of the forage here in the james river so what i did was kind of just start floating the jig around some trees James, baby. Look how white that sucker is. I had pretty high hopes on the rest of that current with the wood and stuff in the water floating that jig around. Never really happened. Got back into an area that I really had circled on the map that I wanted to try. Of course, we had camera problems, but one of my first casts in there, we were able to catch another three pounder. So I went around poking around again with that spinner bait. But he was catching them right on the edge. Mouth bob just yoked on it. He's got black spots. What's going on, everybody? It's day two. Um, camera malfunctioned yesterday, not good. SD card was almost full from a different trip we did before coming here, so I got that all figured out. Hopefully, we don't have that today. Um, I caught four fish, kind of shook one off. Um, so there's five and got one other bite, so six bites total. All were keepers. I had about close to 14 pounds yesterday, which is, I guess, a really big bag here. Um, 15 pounds is like, if you come in with two 15 pound bags, you're gonna be like sitting good to make fish Saturday, which is the top 10. So, looking back at this, I can say that my uh, information was a little bit wrong and maybe a little naive here on the James River when it comes to this time of year. Um, obviously, I'm back here editing this video after the tournament and stuff like that. And I was completely more completely wrong in this statement. Uh, even if I was to catch 15 pounds a day, I maybe, maybe would have got a check. That's how much the James River showed up this time of year. It uh, It's a big fish place in the spring here. So, I was wrong. Real happy with that. The only problem is I think everything's going to be changing. Water temperature, full moon, all that good jargon. And I don't think those fish are going to be there by next week tournament time. But it's pretty fun for checking out um, a new area for myself. So I didn't show you camp. But we got the truck parked here. We got the skeeter here. Power box. We got my tent and then the table. We're going to head out of here. Again, we're going to run up to the same ramp we've been going out of. <clears throat> I'm going to check a new river out that I kind of looked at yesterday during rising tide and then ran out of time in the day because it's 40 minutes from where I'm staying to get to this ramp. So we're running late. I couldn't get up this morning. I got to bed at like 11 o'clock last night and that was not what I wanted to do. So let's run up there. Expanding on what I found on day one, the end of day one is where I really went with day two. Um, I found a lot of steeper banks again trying to run that pattern you know most of the pre-spawn pattern or any time of the year besides the spawn on the James River 
And I didn't really find much. I ran up some dirtier creeks and tried to find some dirtier water, which would hold more warmth. And then, you know, be the fish would hopefully, by the book, quote unquote, stick to cover a lot closer. So a spinnerbait, crankbait, or flipping a jig or something would be right up my alley. Unfortunately, this to this day, um, it sucked. So I'll show you some highlights here from the from the day. Not much really happened. We actually did get one bite, but. What I did, you know, was, was a good thing for practice as well as limited a bunch of water. And that's kind of how day two went. Those babies could have been hatched in there and killed in there all in the same year. It's kind of ironic. And that's how today's going so far. Two seconds after our goose incident, got a bite. That wraps up day two on the James River of practice. I ran most of my time after I fished this main river stuff, ran way, way back. Wasn't even on the map. I had to use Google Earth to kind of figure out my way to get back there, try and find some sneaky off-the-wall stuff. Hopefully just get a few bites where it'd be an area that I could run back there, have to myself, get five fish, and then leave. Didn't turn out, and the water was moving too fast back there. It was too dirty. I don't know what happened. It looked real fishy, but just never never panned out. So ran my way back to the ramp. I was a ways away from it, and there was an incoming storm that night, and I did not want to be stuck uh, out on the water or driving back. I wanted to be at camp before that hit. So that kind of wraps up day two. As I was saying, I had to go help Dennis put his boat in. We got a tornado warning. Honestly, don't think the tent's going to make it. But lightning. So we're in the camper shell. Don't know how long we're off to be here. I literally threw my bedding and the mattress in here. So if you thought day two was over a practice, I tell you what, I was just getting ready to put some some sausage in the air fryer and this thing blows in. So uh, just pray that the tent doesn't blow down because it's not looking good my worst fears were kind of imagined that evening one pole of the tent fell down from the strong wind the pole that was on the upwind side coming off the river there blew a pole down and it was allowed the rain to blow in and I woke up the next morning to two to three inches of rain in the tent so luckily I moved over to the sleeping in the bed of the pickup and I slept there for a couple days just for the simple fact that it was I didn't have enough time from practice and stuff to really deal with the water. It was just in the main area of the tent, so we ended up sleeping in the back of the pickup. Welcome to uh, Road to Pro. You got to sleep in the back of your pickup to try and make it some days. Sucker. <laughs> there were 
right, these things will ruin your gear. Hit it like a freight train. After catching that striper, I did poke around on some more like traditional main river um, stuff and never really got a bite after that. So decided to explore some backwaters, kind of where I'm more comfortable that is. And I was trying, having problems with my Humminbird 360. I haven't been able to really dial it in like I'd like. So I was kind of on the phone with a buddy here trying to get some information on how to get it dialed in. But this is probably the first fish and so far the only fish that I um, caught due to the Humbird 360 because I could see a piece of structure there kind of in the shadows that I probably would have just went over and never really thought about. So on the phone, talking about settings and stuff like that, got kind of you know carried away, and I guess I wasn't paying attention, and I did not mean to catch this fish because I uh, hoping to shake it off but with other boats in the area, but uh, it turned out to be one of my bigger fish of the, of the practice. Yeah. Just a second. I'm gonna. What'd you say? After accidentally hooking into that fish, it weighed just a little bit over four pounds, and then I was able to. Um, didn't mean to once again hook a fish on a spinner bait. I brought over a rock and I watched the line go tick and swim off, and literally did not even pull on it at all. And I opened my bail, let the fish take line, and it just never never shook off so I caught two in a small area so I knew this is a place that fish are going to probably be pulling up to is in the back of a cove and then um, I knew dock pilings were or any kind of piling any kind of straight uh, vertical cover off the bank had usually been good for people in the past watching videos and again I'm reflecting back to all that all that uh, information or studying I've done over the last couple months before going here and so I went and just flipped along here and was able to get my my, basically my first and like only uh, drop shot bite in practice or the tournament and I was able to shake it off that's kind of how how it's supposed to work in these you're not supposed to be able to hook them that easy but this is kind of how I what I was hoping to do um, throughout the day on high and low tides uh, when the water's not moving is go pick apart some of this vertical cover and it never really did work out for me in practice or the tournament but this is kind of my only bite Oh my gosh, that's all she wrote. One, two, day three. Yeah, we got the rods packed up. We retied what we needed to. Um, we're going back to, to have supper at Kent's place and yeah, I don't know what we're gonna do tomorrow. We're gonna talk over a game plan and see what happens tomorrow. But. I'm having fun. I'm not discouraged. That's the main thing. So. Hopefully uh, our tent has still got some water in it. I don't know. Hopefully we can get back in time to where we can wipe that all out and maybe we can sleep in the tent tonight. Otherwise it's in the back of the pickup again. My feet in my sleeping bag got wet last night. So we'll see. Luckily I can sleep good anywhere. But We got to run back. Here we go. All right. Starting off day one, two, three, day four on the James. We got a late start. High tide is in half an hour to where it'll be maximum high tide. Uh, we we'll looked at one spot on the map already. I idled around it for about 10, 15 minutes. No bueno. Saw some pylons from an old barge thing. Threw around those. Those are in 16 feet of water. Too deep for what I'm thinking. So we got another spot to, to check out here. We got three spots I want to hit today and at least go through. We probably won't get through all three of them, but 
trying to run the same pattern that I did when I got bit. Uh, we might end up going back to that same area that I did on day one just to check it out again to see what's changed, but we're going to be fishing around a lot of people. So. how us today is going busted off my only spinner bait like that all we got is the blades Whew. almost got stuck on the main river or main oxbow all right time to find a new spinner bait I'm gonna have to go buy some more of those That's all she wrote. We're gonna be pushing, pushing time to get back. I do not want to be on this river at dark. So, um, unfortunately, I missed the only bite we got today. Had one other bite earlier, and that was that's it. That's all the water we ran today comes on a buzz bait. My first fish on a slightly rising tide. I don't know if that makes a difference or anything. Can do an area that I've had marked on the map for, I would say, over a couple months, month, something like that, that I saw on a YouTube video. So it was nice to actually get back in here and see that it had fish in it. We're gonna get the rods thrown in the rod box quick. We're gonna, we got a little bit of an idle. It, it took me a little bit to get back in here. And luckily we got a rising tide. It was only about a foot, a foot and a quarter to get in here. We had a rising tide, so it should be deeper on the way out. Had some camera malfunctions, but I actually went back into an area where I uh, fished prior, probably, probably been four or five days since I've been in there, but there was a lot more pressure that I alluded to earlier in the video. And I want to see on a different tide if I could go back in there and catch fish behind people. So that's exactly what I did is I went behind people, seen some areas where there's a lot of boaters um, picking away. And I'm like, I'm going to try and see if I can find a technique or something that I can go behind them and actually catch fish. And I was able to do that. Unfortunately, didn't get all fish catches on film with some more SD card trouble. But here's a couple. First ever flathead catfish. Just when I thought I was gonna have a nice bass on a pattern that we are trying to develop, we go ahead and smoke this nasty thing.
Ta-da! Flathead catfish. My first. Yuck. Oh, bottom of the boat is just freaking nasty. What's crack a lacking, ladies and gentlemen? Just got done with a, uh, I don't know, over 10 mile run. Getting kind of used to these long runs. But we're trying to get back in this area. We got a bite on, I don't know how many days ago it was. When I missed filmed it, that's what it was. And uh, it's supposed to be mid rising tide right now. And we're still only two feet of water. So we're trying to be careful. High, I mean the water's not moving when I say slack. And then as the day progresses at 10 to noonish starts falling, that's when I get my bites. So I don't know. shot. guy. I swear it'd be off a piece of structure. That one might have kept. I think it would have. Really white. He's just moving up here, I think. Stupid camera. My hooks are bent in. My biggest fish. Dude. I don't know how I felt her grab it. Tried to shake it off. Like I can't even get it unhooked. Just under four and a half. Gosh dang it. Jeez.
Last one of the trip. see Kento make his cast here and we're pretty close to the tournament. This is obviously day one of official practice and uh, Kent's second or third day of fishing. And so you can see his rod kind of loads up here and he's trying to shake that fish off because there's guys around the corner from him. We can't really see it from this camera angle but kind of a veteran move by Kent here and shake this fish off. You can see the line swimming underneath the boat. What's going on guys? I'm Kenny. This is the 2022 Bassmaster Opens Northern Division. We're here on the James River. Uh, this is uh, official practice day number one. Um, I've been here a couple days already pre-practicing, but um, yeah, the river's fishing good. This is a um, James River, a beautiful place. Lots of, lots of different spe species of fish and um, quite a few largemouth bass out there. I haven't ran into very many big ones, um, but uh, getting quite a few bites, which is encouraging because this place can be pretty stingy. Um, so yeah, super excited to be kicking off the 2022 Northern Division season. I've had a couple of Southern Opens already. It didn't go very well. Um, not gonna lie, I'm not too happy about it, but Hey, that's just fishing. You got to shake those things off and keep moving on and super excited to have a fresh start here uh, in the Northern Division. So um, excited to be hanging out with my buddy Ethan this year on the Northern Division. Um, super stoked for him to be a boater this year. Um, it's been fun breaking down the lake with him and uh, yeah, man, just uh, excited for the next day of practice here and super excited to see what happens in the tournament. So stay tuned and uh, hopefully we'll be able to show you some good fish catches and uh, a lot of good scenery here around the James River. All right, we launched at the site here where we're gonna be launching on Thursday. It's good to see the ramp. Um, it's gonna be kind of a cluster on getting co-anglers and launching on here. There's 225 boats in this really small area. So. I'm so visual that I got to see these things beforehand. So uh, we have a rising tide here. Uh, we're going to have to make a short day because I got to get back and get that kill switch fixed. Um, yeah, I don't know. Wait, I want to see it. And then the Yamaha guy just got here with four other boats and probably got bigger problems than I do. So we're going we're gonna to see what happens. But rising tide, so the fish should be biting here wherever we go if there's fish around. So we'll see how it goes. I don't even know where we're going to run to yet. Oh, 
bent in. Freaking bent in for a reason. Had to have the GoPro down because it was raining. This is a three pounder. Two and a half. <laughs> I felt it bite it and I pulled on a little bit. Come, come tournament time. I'm gonna have the hooks fully exposed. They're all gonna be jumping off or something. Good fish, cheese, but my goodness. We got one on a buzz bait, biggest one on a buzz bait all week. They're close to it. There you go. Next cast, 25 seconds later, another one. I was missing the tail. The old snapping turtle. It's gonna be all right. Just chill. I gotta get my chatterbait. It's a jackhammer. If you don't understand, it's a jackhammer. They're expensive. I'm not gonna touch your babies. I want the jackhammer back. See, I got the jackhammer. We're good to go. Peace, love, be with you. It's gonna be all right, all right? Chill, chill. Jesus. I don't think that Osprey understands how much a jackhammer costs more than your little nest of sticks combined. Unreal. Don't even know. Final day of official practice here, James River. We gotta be off the water at 12 o'clock. It is 9.30 right now. And so I'm gonna call her quits. So that's recap and practice. The next video that you're gonna see is uh, tournament day one and two, James River, and hopefully a day three. That means we made a top 10 cut. Um, my best day out here was probably close to 15 pounds. Um, 
but I don't, I'm not sure. We're precursing the tournament here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to manage five bites a day. I don't know. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think of the practice videos and, or practice and uh, travel vlog video, how to get down here. I try and document everything I can as much as I can, but I'm not a full time YouTuber, so I don't take this camera into a garage or a gas station or anything with me. But try and document the highs, document the lows, and let you know what I'm going through to chase that dream to qualify for the Bassmaster Elite Series and become a Bassmaster or a bass professional, make a living catching bass. That's my goal. So. Thanks for watching. Tune uh, next time to Preston Outdoors. Look for the tournament video. Drop some comments below. Let me know what you think. See ya.